what is what is Socrates trying to reach when he's dealing with the arguments of Cebes? Right from the beginning. There's just one line I'd like to stay with. <clears throat> That section when Socrates had finished, um, in this text it's uh, 472. It's approximately at 70. You got that when Socrates had finished? And yeah. CVs picks up, right? So all we need is a reader. Would you not agree that Julie should be the reader for that? Sure, she should. Right? As long as I don't CVs, have right? And then we need another person to read for Socrates. Okay. Right. And all we need is um, three exchanges. Okay, just for a few minutes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. <coughs> when Socrates had then finished, Cebes took up the word. Socrates, he said, on the whole, I think you speak well. But that about the soul is a thing which people find very hard to believe. They fear that when it parts from the body, it is nowhere anymore. But on the day when a man dies, as it parts from the body and goes out like a breath or a whiff of smoke, it is dispersed and flies away and is gone and is nowhere anymore. If it existed anywhere, gathered together by itself and rid of these evils which you have just described, there would be great and good hope, Socrates, that, when, that what you say is true. But this very thing needs no small reassurance of faith, that the soul exists when the man dies, and that it has some power and sense. Quite true, quite true, Stevie. Well, what are we to do? Shall we discuss this very question, whether such a thing is likely or not? For my part, I should very much like to know what your opinion is about it. Thank you. What does he need? Reassurance. He, he's asking, he, hey, it's very hard to believe these things about the nature of the soul. But he has doubts, fundamental doubts, does he not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is Socrates willing to do as he explores the positions of Simeon's? Pardon me, Cebes. <clears throat> what, what is it? Discuss it, whether it's likely or not. Not whether it's true or not. Right. What are you going for? Likely. Likelihood. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, what does that mean in terms of what we've been reasoning and how we've been reasoning? Means. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You can't know. It's a yeah. Right. You can have a likely story, that's about it. Yeah, what do you find? That, um, <laughs> they're in agreement. That there's, they're gonna, there's gonna be room for doubt, but they're not gonna know the truth. What's well, so you gonna see whether or not it is Likely. Likely or not. Mm -hmm. That what? That the soul survives after, after death. death. Oh. <clears throat> is he going after he's gonna prove that it's true? No. No, no. Likely. How far does this likelihood go in this dialogue? Is is everything therefore he's going to examine his conclusions are all likely? I'm rather curious. Does it not? So therefore, you know, um, we can pick up where we left off and explore the major idea he presents there of remembrance.
Now, <clears throat> to do this with fun, hold on to the section on uh, the famous section on purification. Got it? Remember that whole paragraph on purification? It's not purification, the separation of the soul from the body, and he talks about that. Can you go back to that? A couple of words that are important. All right. Separation and collecting. Take a look. Remember that section? At uh, 68. And is not purification mm -hmm. really that mm -hmm. which has been mentioned so often in our discussion? To separate as far as possible the soul from the body and to accustom it, to collect itself together out of the body in every part, and to dwell alone by itself as far as it can, both at this present and in the future, being freed from the body as if from a, a prison. So now look, see, in this, I just want to focus on these two words, separating, collecting. All right, take a look, is that major in this paragraph? <laughs> <laughs> suppose, suppose for a moment that these two terms are central to this idea of remembrance. Then the dynamics of the separation of the soul from the body is going to be the same in the position that he explores on remembrance. <coughs> Would you find that curious? Look here, would you agree that, now I practice this, so, uh, would you say these lines are equal? Well, roughly, yeah. Oh. Not you. Well. Okay. Uh, so then, in my asking you this question, mm -hmm. something curious came up. Oh, I appreciate it. Deeply. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right? Is it true that while Julie was examining this, she said, not really equal, but similar. Yeah, but in other words, look her, when she's making a judgment about this, she comes up with this idea, equal, that is not in the experience. Agree? Wait a minute. <laughs> you're looking at two lines and you're being asked, does it appear to you that these lines are equal? And you said, well, somewhat. So the idea of equality came up in your mind, didn't it? Yeah. Right, right, right. Is this idea of equality something that you found in your experience? Or is every instance of equality is always something that might be different between any two things you're saying are equal? Yeah, the idea of equality came up in the Parmenides. I don't know the work. Well, it's an idea. It's a, I don't know anything about it's a it. Concept. Yeah, I don't. Of know. perfect. Of perfect. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, did the idea of equality come up in, as you were examining these two? Yeah. Uh, were you in some way collecting these together, considering them together, yeah. and then separating out? The, right. What were you doing? The process. I, what I is was, the process of judging? We're seeing that the widths were a little different, and so they weren't equal. So you have to separate the difference in order to come up to the idea they may be equal. Yeah. But Watch. Are these words mm. part of making the judgment about these two lines in equality? Like, 
the idea of equal or equality, does it have any difference in that? <coughs> Pure, no difference? Does it... As you compare the pure, this idea of equal, and you apply it, you say, oh, no, well, this is, it comes, approximates it, it comes close to it. So then this is a pure idea. Yeah. By the way, is that equally true for other things? Have you ever seen anything beautiful? Yeah. Oh, more than one? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Would you say it is truly beautiful, whatever it is you experience? Or are there some things that you're overlooking in order to say it was beautiful? Yeah, overlooking a little bit. Same thing? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute, the same thing? Mm -hmm. So you're separating out difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you're separating out and you're bringing together to make this judgment. Yeah, true. You know what? This is the strangest argument because this argument, he says, can apply to beauty, justice, or all of these ideas. But wait a minute, don't we have a fundamental doubt that there are such ideas, truly? I mean, do you think, these, do you think there really are these ideas? Yeah. What? Yeah. You're taking a position. <laughs> I know. <laughs> as foolish as I might look. But... Mm. Just don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> You're going through it, right? Well, look here. See, all of Plato is here. This real simple argument. And we did it last time, but since, you know, it's been a little while, could we just go back over it, especially if anyone has any insight into the use of these kinds of terms and the exploration of this idea of equality? Yeah? What about the idea of truth? Well, by the way, would you say some things you've known are true? Yeah. Yeah, but then not really, it's not, not truth, is it? They approximate what you'd call truth? Well, if it's true that my brakes aren't working, it's really true. <laughs> By the way, right. would you agree it admits of degrees? Yeah. Yeah, therefore? Yeah. So you separate out, you separate out, you collect, and you come to a conclusion, and this emerges. Ideas, pure ideas. Now the whole thing, this whole thing, is a very simple argument and strange. So I thought if we just go back over it, what do you think? Interesting. In what way? Well, it seems like I'm, I'm wondering if we can ever not separate and collect. Like it's, it seems so fundamental. If it is then, you know what you're saying? You're holding a real strong position. Yeah. I'm ready for death, what should I say? <laughs> Would you be kind enough then to read for us? Continue. Um, okay. Um. At that purification spot? No, no, no. Oh, the other spot? Um. On page 476, around 72, C or D, another thing, said CBs, putting in, you know that favorite argument of yours, Socrates, which uh, we have so often heard from you, not that he accepts, that our learning is simply recollection. 
That also makes it necessary, I suppose, if it is true, that we learnt at some former time what we now remember. But this is impossible unless our soul existed somewhere before it was born in this uh, human shape. In this way also, the soul seems to be something immortal. How many qualifications do you pick up? It's your argument, I suppose, if it is true. Right? The qualification? Yeah. He's heard it often? Simply. Right. Then Simeus put in, uh, Simeus put in, but CBs, what are the proofs of this? Right? Remind me for I don't remember. Now, this now comes from CBs. You'll play CBs? Okay. There's one very beautiful proof that people, when asked questions, if they are properly asked, say of themselves everything correctly. Yet, if there were not knowledge in them and right reason, they would not be able to do this. You see, if you show someone a diagram or anything like that, he proves most clearly that this is true. Hmm. Nancy, what did you want to do? Oh, sure. If you don't believe this, Simeus, look at it. Yeah, in and louder, another, louder. If you don't believe this, Simeus, <coughs> look at it in another way and see whether you agree. You disbelieve, I take it, how what is called learning can be recollection? Disbelieve you? Not I. <laughs> I just want to have an experience. Not, not, it's personal, right? I'm not, not going to disbelieve you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I just want to have an experience of what we're now discussing, recollection. I almost remember and believe already from what CB has tried to say, yet nonetheless, I should like to hear how you were going to put it. What do you see in terms of the force of the argument? Would you agree? Mm -hmm. He's, is he as much interested in the argument as hearing it from Socrates? Right, because Seabees tried to say it, but it didn't work. So he wants to hear. It's like he wants to be convinced. So he's hoping Socrates will say it and convince him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it personal? Like I want to hear it from you personally? Yeah. Ah, ah. And I just want to have an experience. He wants an experience of it. Mm -hmm. Because no one has ever made a mistake at whatever it is they experience. What they experience is always true. It's not actually experience anyway. I, oh, yeah. Oh. Check, I checked it out. It's not actually experience anyway. It's, he just wants the logos. He wants the argument. But he wants the argument from Socrates. Definitely. Okay. I mean, your hey, point is still, hey. no, is no, still no, well no, taken. No, no. Change the dialogue. Come on, stick in logos. That is important. Yeah. And he wants it from Socrates. Mm -hmm. See. Mark, you know there's a second card. There's no difficulty in anybody accepting this argument. <clears throat> Whatever you remember, you must have known it previously. Right? Yeah. At some time. There's nothing about that. That's pretty simple. Yeah. But he's going to say, wait a minute, it's prior to your birth. Then you have a different argument, don't you? Let's go. Go ahead. Okay. This is how we agree, I suppose, that if anyone remembers something, he must have known it before at some time. Certainly. Then do we agree on this also, that when knowledge comes to him in such a way, it is recollection? What I mean is something like this. If a man has seen or heard something or perceived it by some other sense, and he not only knows that, but thinks of something else 
of which the knowledge is not the same but different, is it not right for us to say he remembered that which he thought of? So that's just what we did, isn't it? Yeah. That's right. yeah. So he calls that kind of reasoning remembrance. Go ahead. Go ahead. How do you mean? What good point? How do you mean? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Here's an example. Knowledge of a man and knowledge of a liar are different. Of course. Well, you know about lovers that when they see a liar or a dress or anything else which their beloved uses, this is what happens to them. They know the liar and they conceive in the mind the figure of the boy whose liar it is. Now this is recollection. Just as when one sees Simeus, one often remembers Cebes, and there would be thousands of things like that. Thousands indeed. Then is that sort of thing a kind of recollection? especially when one feels this about things which one had forgotten because of time and neglect? Yeah, certainly. Very well then. When you see a horse in a picture, or a liar in a picture, is it possible to remember a man? And when you see Simeus in a picture, to remember Cebes? Yes, indeed. Or when you see Simeus in a picture, to remember Simeus himself? Oh, yes. These being either like or unlike? Yes. Right. Watch this language now. It makes no difference. Whenever, seeing one thing from side of this, you think of another thing, whether like or unlike, it is necessary. That that was recollection. Certainly. Does it not follow from all this that recollection is both from like and from unlike things? It does. But when a man remembers something from like things, must this not necessarily occur to him also to reflect whether anything is lacking or not from the likeness of what he remembers? Right. He must. Consider then... No, 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 no. What were you thinking? Mm -hmm. well, I was trying to to get that. They could just go back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on, do it again. But when a man remembers something from like things, must this not necessarily occur to him also to reflect whether anything is lacking or not from the likeness of what he remembers? No, because the likeness that you remembered was equal. See, there's a level of likeness here, there's a level of likeness here, and unlikeness. Because while these are like <coughs> quality, uh, they're like, but they're unlike. And But we come to the idea of equal, do we not? And that's certainly unlike this. So what does that mean? It means that from unlike things we get an image of what it is truly like. Uh oh. Like it's truly like equal, but it's not. So we get remembrance from like and unlike. Wow, go ahead. Okay, consider then if this is true. We say, I suppose, there is such a thing as the equal, not a stick equal to a stick, or a stone to a stone, or anything like that, but something independent, which is alongside all of them, the equal itself, equality, yes or no? Agree, right, from what we just reasoned. Mm -hmm. Read it again with this in mind. Does it follow? Consider then if this is true. We say, I suppose, there is such a thing as the equal. Yes or no? Yes. Go ahead. Not a stick equal to a stick. Or Not a st this kind of equal. Go ahead. 
or a stone to a stone or anything like that, <coughs> but something independent which is alongside all of them. Agreed? Yes. The yeah. equal itself. Yeah. Equality. Good, good, good. Keep going. Yes, indeed. Upon my word. No doubt about it. What? What did he reach? A conclusion. Woo! No doubt. No doubt. This overcame the all truth. of his doubts. The truth. But he had to hear it from Socrates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Curious? Yeah. Then he must trust this dialogue if it comes out of Socrates. But not reason. Was that the rabbit? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Now, next level, okay? Mm -hmm. Keep going. And do we understand what that is? Certainly. Where did we get the knowledge of it? Yeah, where did you get the knowledge of equal? Where'd you go? Go ahead. Okay. <coughs> Was it not from such examples as we gave just now, by seeing equal sticks or stones and so forth, from these we conceive that which was something distinct from them? Agreed. This idea is certainly something distinct from mm -hmm. what we call equal, something that's truly distinct and different, yet it's like it. Go ahead. Don't you think it is distinct? Look at it this way also. Do not the same stones or sticks appear equal to one person and unequal to another? What do you think? It's possible. <coughs> if you possible to get her to read it again. Oh, I'm supposed to say certainly. No, no, no. But if you come on, if you want to reflect upon it, just get the person to read it again. We go through it. It looked like you had a concern about that. Yeah, but read it again, please. Where did we get the knowledge of it? Was it not? Oh, wait a minute. Agree. Of oh, equality. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a good question? Yeah. Why? Um. Because it's like, where did it come from? Yeah, because you didn't get it from experience. Right. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Right. Um, so, go ahead. Was it not? Okay. Was it not from such examples as we gave just now, by seeing equal sticks or stones and so forth, from these we conceive that which was something distinct from them. <coughs> Wait a minute. Agree? Mm-hmm. Okay. <coughs> Don't you think it is distinct? Look at it this way also. Do not the same stones or sticks appear equal to one person and unequal mm -hmm. to another? Certainly. You're with it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Keep going. Well, did the really equals ever seem unequal to you? <coughs> I mean, did equality ever seem to be inequality? What do you think? Um, no. No, because the idea <coughs> of equal or equality, does that admit of being unequal? No. No, no, no. So you're right with it, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Never, Socrates. Then those equal things are not the same as the equal itself. Not at all, I think. Right? So. Jeez, yeah. Good, good, keep going. Yet from these equals being distinct from that equal, you nevertheless conceived and received knowledge of that equal? Very true. Well, how do, you, how do we feel about the sticks as compared with the real equals we spoke of just now? Do the equal sticks seem to us to be as equal as equality itself? Stop. Does it? No. No, keep going. Or do they fall somewhat short of the essential nature of equality? <coughs> or nothing short? They fall short a great deal. 
then we agree on this. Here comes the conclusion. When one sees a thing and thinks, this which I now see wants to be like something else. Like one of the things that are, but falls short and is unable to be such as that is, it is inferior. It is necessary, I suppose, that he who thinks thus has previous knowledge of that which he thinks it resembles, but falls short of. That is necessary. Wait a minute, did you go for that? Mm-hmm. I don't understand the use of the word wants in that. Do you? Um. I'll tell you what, we can get her to read it again, and if it's clear to you, good, we'll keep on going, but if it isn't, you'll stop it. Okay. Okay, could you read it again? The Greek might be. This which I, okay, this, then we agree on this. When one sees a thing and thinks, this which I now see wants to be like something else. What? Is that true? Does this want to be something else? Does this want to... Two, do these two lines want to be something else? Well, it means... Yeah, I want a hamburger. <laughs> it would be pretty cool if they did. I want to be... It means it's <laughs> lacking. Therefore, we, do, we really? can play with the word and we'll go for the low and, and proper... Go ahead. I don't know if that will help. It looks like it's bullet time. See, because would you not agree... With this word, he's saying, hey, he's saying there's something in nature. If this is the, if, the, if, if he's <coughs> stating things simply and clearly, this wants to be equal. What? No, wait a second. You know, like in the Parmenides, they define. I don't know Parmenides. Well, <laughs> they define a whole, is that as that of which no part is wanting? I'm glad to hear that. So it's that same sense of no part is lacking. Missing, lacking. No part is lacking. Okay, re missing. read it with that in mind. Okay. Come on. That actually isn't possible here. When oh, one sees good. a thing. <laughs> when one sees a thing and thinks, this which I now see wants to be like something else. Lacks. Like lacks. one. Right? Put, put in lacks. Okay. <laughs> this which I now Does see. Does it lack? Lacks. Right now. Hmm? It lacks being like the other, like something else. Being like I, something I, I else. Lost the word. Okay. Ah, that, uh, like one no, of the. I'm looking for something yeah. else. But it oh, lacks. It lacks this, right. doesn't well, it? Right. He's just repeating himself then, because okay. he says it lacks two lines right. down. Right. Could we say that Bulatai wishes, wants, or oh, intends? It intends to be like something else. No, there's another one. But there's then there. the things which are but fall short. It Not has true. a tendency to be like something else. A wish, or a will, or a desire, or intent. I, I like that. So what are we going to do with this word? Save it till later, because it, uh, it falls short down below. Yeah. It's wanting See, later. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, I just want to make sure. Keep going. But isn't it, Wait a minute, Barbara. Isn't it uh, related to yeah. the... We were just for a moment going to look at the low. 74E. Or... While they're looking it up. Or though. want, do you have it in... I'm, I'm looking at 74E. Oh, were you looking at something else? Yeah, okay. but that's okay. I'm looking for it now. What am I looking for? 74E. You're looking for what is being translated as. Um, do we agree when anyone on seeing a thing thinks, this thing I, that I see aims at being? Aims, aims. see? Aims. Yeah. It has yeah. well, to be bullet time. Desires, wishes. Desires, yeah. wishes. Uh, intends. Isn't that Intends. Intends to be? It's, it can't have an impersonal use. That's what it is here, right? And if it is impersonal, see, it, then it would... Yeah. Well, the problem is, it, you know, it really does have some sense of... Even intends moves us a little away from wishing and wanting and willing and all that, but... Okay. It's still I'm going to go, the puzzle, I guess. Yeah, I'm okay. Saying. I want to go back to the, what seems to be a rather strange point later, okay? But I just want it registered. Okay, go ahead. But isn't it that when you say wants to be like something else, like one of the things that are, and isn't it equality itself is that which is the thing that is? So whatever is, whatever equal is, <coughs> it's trying to be like that, as close to that equality that okay. it in itself. Okay. 
the way you're reading that, it moves it away from the things to the idea itself. Right, that's yeah. what okay. follows. That's one of the ways you can read it. But that's it right. says that. Uh, there, that's right. Wait a minute. I'm not sh shutting you down. Does it make sense? Okay, yeah. Push more. Same paragraph or further? Next. <clears throat> that is necessary. Very well. Do we feel like that or not about equal things and the equal? Assuredly we do. Okay, now watch this one. Go ahead. It is necessary then that we knew the equal before that time when, first seeing the equal things, we thought that all these aim at being such as the equal, but fall short. Same problem? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Hold it. Same problem? Mm-hmm. Good. Well, we go on to agree here also. We did not and we could not get a notion of the equal by any other means than by seeing or grasping or perceiving by some other sense. I say the same of equal and all the rest. And they are the same, Socrates, for what the argument wants <laughs> wants to prove. That's funny. Now the argument's wanting. Done. Done. Yeah. Done. Like, now the argument has some life. Right. <coughs> yeah. It wants to be like yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Look here, then. It is from the senses we must get the notion that all these things of sense aim at that which is the equal and fall short of it. Uh, what's the word we're going to look at? Again, aim. Come on, yes or no? Yeah. Aim. Yeah. How, or how do we say? Take a look at what that suggests. Okay, that's, Come on. That's strive after. I think that's for regatai. But the other one, for the purposes of our argument, that's bulatai again. Well, you have in the, the route it says uh, the argument wants, right? For what the argument wants to prove. Yeah. But um, so that's the same term as we had before, bulatai, which means wishing, wanting, intending, all of that. Proposing, design. It could mean proposing. Yeah. Um, so what would, come on, as Thomas best you can. Inspiring. No, go ahead. That's it, sorry. Nancy was getting something from the back row, I think. Yeah, go ahead. Thomas Taylor says aspire. 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 So it seems like it's a teleological the, kind the of argument. force where it's got an end in mind, kind of, that it wants to achieve. <coughs> well, I think the second is true. Yeah. Is it the argument or is it the lines that are trying to be equal? Because it's rather curious to talk about lines aiming or desiring or wanting to be equal. Unless you're in a art class with Brad. Even then, sort <laughs> Wow. Oh, it's it, it's all in the perceptible realm, I think. Um, uh, strive after um, the equal that is. See, see it's, a, it's a great line and it's a great point. Okay? Uh -huh. So, let's see if we can create a mystery about it. Here it is. Look here, then. It is from the senses we must get the notion that all these things of sense aim at that which is the equal and fall short of it. We must get the notion that all these things of sense, see, everything of sense aims to be in the realm of the uh, mind. Yeah. Right, all nature really is aiming to be of the mind. And it's according to that line, right? Is yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you not agree that's weird? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, I wouldn't say weird. Okay. Uh, Trippy. 
Okay. <laughs> I'll take well, it. it. it <coughs> David. Uh, it certainly is an indictment of all things that they would be willing to put money on the fact that they were actually the same when in reality they fall so far short of it. And I think that's what he's doing with the Amy. He's no. saying that, no. that as much as you want to be the same, all this stuff in the world is never going to be sane. So then we collectively should mm. shed a tear about all things of sense, since they're always aiming to achieve the <laughs> ideal states, but they always miss it. Right? So let us shed a tear at the sadness of nature. Weird? Ah, uh, shucks. Good. That's where I, we're going somewhere. Okay, a couple more lines? Yes. Do it again, please. Yes. Good. Then before we began to see and hear and use our other senses, we must have got somewhere knowledge of what the equal is. If we were going to compare with it the things judged equal by the senses and see that all things are eager to be such as that equal is, but are inferior to it. Thank you. What am I going to pick on? Eager. 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 Right. <coughs> What's he now saying? Wishful thinking. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> if we're going to compare with it the things judged equal by the senses and see that all things are eager to be such that equal is, but inferior to it. Good. Okay, keep going. Oh, this is necessary from what we agreed, Socrates. Well, as soon as we were born, we saw and heard and had our other senses. Certainly. Then, we say, we must have got knowledge of the equal before that? Yes. Before we were born, then, it is necessary that we must have got it. So it seems. <coughs> then if we got it before we were born, and we were born having it, we knew before we were born, and as soon as we were born, not only the equal and the greater and the less, but all the rest of such things. For our argument now is no more about the equal than about the beautiful itself, <coughs> and the good itself, and the just and the pious, and I mean everything which we seal with the name of that which is the essence when we ask our questions and respond with our answers in discussion. So we must um, have... You like that? Yeah. No. Do you want to say something about it since it seemed to catch your attention? <laughs> Big step. Well, it's a giant leap. Right? Yeah. Yeah. From two lines to the equal to the beautiful itself. And, and we must have got itself. it somewhere. Yeah. Before At we prior. Born. Well, then, it must have been... See, that's why Waldorf is the only good school. <laughs> because they teach all the kids, you know, just one thing. Mm -hmm. See, the first grade, all the kids have equal justice, beauty. They know it all. And then by the second grade, they forget it. <laughs> and then the other classes try to remind them what they forgot in the first grade. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> but come on, what do you find? How about reading it again and stop where you wonder, okay? Come on. Okay. And if we got it before we were born, and we were born having it. We knew before we were born, and as soon as we were born, not only the equal and the greater and the less, but all the rest of such things. For our argument now is no more about the equal than about the beautiful itself, and the good itself, and the just, and the pious. And I mean everything which we seal with the name of that which is, the essence which when we ask our questions and respond with our answers in discussion. Okay. See, stay there. 
Okay. Would you agree we've got those? Okay. All knowledge of what is. We got it. Here it is. Hey, how come we forgot it? Now we've got the problem of forgetfulness. Like if we're so smart, how come we're so, so stupid? Right, go along with them. Agree? I mean, that's. It's a lovely argument. What does it mean? Now he has to explain forgetfulness, does he not? <laughs> or there's some mystery about being human that we have it and we can't get in touch with it. Which is this, that is a theory about ignorance. We have it, can't get in touch with it. Why? Okay, that's, that's, is that correct? Do you go along with that? Is that a mystery? It makes the argument look foolish, doesn't it? Or you can say, no, 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 no. That's why kids, when they're born, in the first couple of days, they're not just sleeping, they're contemplating all of these great ideas. Yeah. Yeah, and then they get tired, and then when they get tired, uh, they forget. Well, no. <laughs> forget that. Okay, let's push. Okay, a couple more steps. So, your last line is. So we must have got the proper knowledge of each of these before we were born. That is true. And if having got the knowledge in each case, we have not forgotten. We must continue knowing this and know it through life. For to know is having got knowledge of something, to keep it and not to lose it. <coughs> Dropping knowledge, Simeus, is what we call forgetfulness, isn't it? Yep. Just so. No. <laughs> but I think if we got it before birth and lost it at birth, and if afterwards using our senses about these things, we recover the knowledge which once before we had, would not what we call learning be to recover our own knowledge? And this we should rightly call recollection? Certainly. So, looks like you lost it, you gained it and lost it. Mm -hmm. And now you have to recover it through <laughs> recollection. But why? Go ahead, turn the page, All right? For you see, it has been shown to be possible that a man perceiving something by sight or hearing or some other sense thinks from this perception of some other thing which he has forgotten to which he compares this as being like or unlike. So as I say, there is, a, there is choice of two things. Either we were all born knowing them and we all know them throughout life. Or afterwards, those who we say learn just remember and nothing more, and learning would be recollection. That is certainly true, Socrates. Okay. This is his answer. We always know it, and we use it. We always know it. You know the problem? <laughs> we don't know what knowing is. But hold that. Okay, look here. What does he say? We got it. And when the kid is playing with whatever he's playing, and he makes any kind of judgment, what's he going to be doing? If he's judging, he's going to have to be using it. And if he's using it? He had to have it. He has to have it, and he's recalling it. Is that right? He jumps jump right back to that notion of like, as if all cognitive processes have a fundamental substance, the liking of things. More, every come time on. You, yeah, every come time on, more. They have a cognitive 
experience it's is it like or unlike to the degree of which it's like what, what unlike is in what to the degree that it's like what you know similarity and so every time you think you're like okay you see if this is the case and let's assume it for the moment <coughs> right that insofar as you're aware of your experience whether you like it or not you're using all of these ideas but when do you get the to get to know the thing in itself, apart from using it all the time. But, like, my, my grandson came out a year or so ago. In the morning, probably early morning, he came out in the kitchen, and he's walking out, he's only, at that time, just a little over two. He goes, wow, three, wow, wow. I said, yeah, good, wow, wow. Because sometimes we go in the garden and we wow, you know. I look at a beautiful flower, and we go wow. Yeah, wow. Here's another wow. So he comes out mm -hmm. in the kitchen. He goes wow, wow. I said, what's up? He said, it's a dream, a dream. Clouds, trees, wow. He woke up to beauty, right? Mm -hmm. He could put it into words, recollect it. But when does he encounter? Beauty itself. Because this is how we, yeah, we always know it, we use it, but when do we get this? Just before right. you say wow. <laughs> More. Well, he has to compare it to beauty itself to say, wow. I agree with you. He has to say, but, that is so close. Wow. Yeah, but why didn't his grandfather say, hey, kid, <laughs> it's a nice judgment you're making. Now, why don't you get back and stay in the wow? Mm. <laughs> but his grandfather wasn't that smart. <laughs> Maybe his grandfather was wowing, too. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect model of the good. I'll put that here too. Which, as we know, is called the most brilliant light of being. So yeah, okay, you're using this, okay, you're using this all the time in your sense experience. Well then, this is using it, in that sense you're not dealing with it by itself, you're using it for making all kinds of judgments, aren't you? But how about just itself? You have to separate. Yeah, okay. All right, let's push on just a short while further and see what's going on. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so many wows. Yeah, it wowed me. Wow. That is certainly uh, top of 480. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that is certainly true, Socrates. Yeah, do it again. That is certainly true, Socrates. Mm. Which do you choose then, Simeus? Were we born knowing, or do we remember afterwards what we had got knowledge of before? <coughs> I can't choose all at once, Socrates. Another question then. You sure. can choose and have some opinion about this. When a man knows anything, could he give an account of what he knows or not? He must be able to do that, Socrates. Do you think that all could give account of the matters we have been discussing? I would that they could. <laughs> um. But so far from that, I fear that tomorrow at this time, there may be no one left in the world able to do that properly. Wow. And Simeus, you don't think that all know them? Oh, no. Then are they trying to remember what they once learned? It must be so. When did our souls get the knowledge of these things? 
For surely it is not since we became human beings. Certainly not. Than before. Yes. So, Simeus, our souls existed long ago, before they were in human shape, apart from bodies, and then had wisdom. Unless indeed we get all these knowledges at birth, Socrates, for that this time is still left. Very well, my comrade. At what other time do we lose them? For we are not born having them, as we admitted just now. Do we lose them at the very same time as we get them? <laughs> Can you suggest any other time? Oh, no, Socrates. I did not see I was talking nonsense. Is this the case then, Simeus? If all these exist, which we are always harping on, the beautiful and the good and every such essence, and if we refer to these essences, all the things which our senses perceive, finding out that the essences existed before in our hours now, and compare our sensations with them, it necessarily follows that just as these exist, so our soul must have existed before our birth. But if they do not exist, this argument will be worthless. Is this true? And is there equal necessity that these things exist and our souls did before our birth? Or if they do not exist, neither did our souls? <coughs> I am quite convinced, Socrates, that there is the same necessity. Okay. Our, and uh -huh. <coughs> take a break because this is, of course, when Simeon enters. Okay, look. Okay. All this deals with the problem of the mind dealing with sense experience, agree? Mm -hmm. Remember the soul, the separation of the soul from the body? You have to collect it from all parts of the body. What are the terms? You have to separate your soul from the body and collect it from all parts of the body. Is that the same process over here in sense experience that we engage in? when we make judgments. Mm -hmm. I know. This is what happens in sense experience. If you want to get into the mind, right? you have to in some way depart from sense experience using the same process. <coughs> separating, separating, collecting, one process, two realms. Right? What do you think, Barbara? She had a great word about this. Well, uh, well, you mean, well, in the Greek, yeah. it talks about, you know where it says, if we refer... Can you get everyone on that page? All, Excuse me, page? That's 480 at the bottom, or... Okay. It's um, 76E, just about, right on. And... Um, Anyway, it says, if all these exist, which we are always harping on, the beautiful and the good in every such essence, and, and if we, now, this word means to carry up to these essences. See, to carry up. That's this process, see, to carry up. All the things which our senses perceive, and then finding out means discovering Again, up, up, discovering the, there in up, that realm. That's right. Um, <coughs> that the essences existed before and are are now ours now. So, so the one process, two realms. Right. Curious. Yeah. 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 And um, is it worth going having gone back over this? Mm -hmm. Are we recollecting <laughs> and bringing doubts to the surface? We're wanting to. We're <laughs> recollecting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, we take a break. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what, what time is that? So, uh, Twenty to eleven. Twenty to eleven. Same.
What championship? Okay. Like to pull it together a bit? Okay. Do you have a friend named Davidovich McGee? What is his name? Yes. Dravidovich. Dravidovich. Yes. Yes, he's a close friend of mine. Yeah, he's places. He goes by a short, it's a, he also has a short name, Dravidovich McGee He's a philosopher from yeah, New York. He's a philosopher in New York. Runs a pub. Brooklyn. Yeah, in Brooklyn, yeah. Next door to Uncle Louie. Oh, that's where he lives, next to Uncle Louie. How about it, we go back in? Because the next two paragraphs are so uh, primo. Oh. <laughs> and what think Cebes? said Socrates. We must convince, convince Cebes. It's good enough for him, as I believe. But he's the most obstinate man in the world at disbelieving what is said. However, I believe he really is convinced that our soul existed before our birth. Yet will it uh, exist after death too? I don't think myself that that has been proved yet, Socrates. We are confronted still with what CB's just now, what said just now. Can it be that when a man dies, the soul is scattered abroad? And that's the end of it, as so many say. For supposing it is composed from somewhere or another and comes into existence before it even enters a human body, what hinders it when it has entered and finally got rid of the body from ending at that very moment and being itself destroyed. So I'll take your argument. Okay, the soul must have existed before, must have gotten all that learning. Nice to hear it. It doesn't mean when it drops dead, it doesn't end totally destroyed, scattered. What's the opposite of these separating and collecting? Whatever the opposite is, that's what it is to be destroyed. Dispersal, collecting, dispersing, separating, coming together, come on, put these two words, what are the opposites, play with them. What's the process of destruction? Separating. Is it not? Mm -hmm. So look what he does. Well said, Simeus. It does seem that half of what ought to be proved has been proved. But our soul exists before our birth. It must also be proved that when we die, it will exist no less than before our birth, if the proof is to be completed. He says, yeah, well, it already has been, said Socrates. Right. Now, take a look at that long paragraph, and let's see the way he ends it, okay? So therefore, I should get someone to read a long paragraph, right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, it has been proven already? Yeah. It has been proved already, my dear Simeus and Sebes. If you choose to combine this argument with what we agreed to before it, that all the living comes from the dead. For if the soul exists before, and if it is necessary that when coming into life and being born, it comes from death and from nothing else at all, it must certainly be necessary that it exists even when one dies, since it must be born again. Well then, what you said has in fact been proved already. 
Still, I think you and Seabees would be glad to investigate this argument yet further. And you seem to me to have the fear which children have, that really, when it leaves the body, the wind blows it away and scatters it, especially if anyone dies not in calm weather, but in a great tempest. <laughs> Go ahead. Seabees laughed and said, then think we are afraid of that, Socrates? And try to convince us against it. Or better, don't think we are afraid. But imagine there is a kind of a child in us which has such fears. Then let us try to persuade this child not to fear death as if it were a boogie. No, said Socrates. You must sing incantations over it every day until you charm it out. Hey. That's reasoning? That's how you can see the truth of the argument? That's weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sing incantations over it. Yeah, go ahead. My dear Socrates, he said, where shall we get a good charmer of such things since you are leaving us? Hellas is a good place, my dear Seabees, he replied, and there are many good men in it. And there are many barbarian nations too. And you must search through them all, looking for such a charmer. You must spare neither money nor pains, since you could not spend money on anything more important. And you must not forget to search among yourselves, for perhaps you could not easily find any better able than yourselves to do that. Oh, that shall be done, of course, said Seabees, but let us go back to where we left off, if you would like to. But certainly I should like to, he said. Of, of course I should. That's well said, said Seabees. Very well then, said Socrates. We must ask ourselves what sorts of things properly undergo this. I mean, what sorts of things are dissolved and scattered? For what sorts we must fear such an end? And for what not? Next, we must consider which sort the soul belongs to. We shall know then whether to be confident or fearful for our own soul. Go back over it. What other okay. things? Come we on. must ask ourselves what sorts of things properly undergo this. Undergo um, this being dissolved and scattered. Right. Right? What sort mm -hmm. of things? Hey, a list. Right. Okay. What sort of things? Go ahead. And for what sorts we must fear such an end? and for what not. So what things have that end, and which do not? And which sort does the soul belong to? And which one are you going to place the soul into? Soul into. Mm -hmm. It's going to hang on to a couple of words? Yeah. Hey, the opposite of those? Dissolved, scattered, mm. right? It's dealing with opposites. Mm -hmm. And that's where we'll go next time we meet. Okay? Cool? Okay. What do you think about our new place? Right. Right. Piano. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Your piano. They told me that they have fire insurance. Did you ever figure out what happened? What, did they ever figure out, Pierre, what happened? I don't know. Yeah, uh, they did the wires above the double door by the piano, yeah. that w wiring was faulty. Oh. And Is if that you an exit sign? By the exit sign. Oh, yeah. Was there an exit sign up there? That had just been worked on late recently? Oh, there he goes. They replaced all the lights by a guy who was very cheap. Uh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> and Rosemary was praising him everywhere. So, this place also told us that they have a great place for weekend workshops, meditation retreats can be here, and that's and a very nice price, by the way. Out of town? Right here. Right here. They have a big meditation room. And you can take a look at it. Yeah. You go down the hall and look on the right, and you'll see what we're talking about. Yeah. So. Thank you. 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 Thank you.